Hello and welcome back. In today's video on motivation, we are going to take a look at our need to belong or our need for affiliation and our need to achieve and the different factors that play a role in what we want to achieve. So let's go ahead and take a look. When it comes to affiliation, it's important to remember that humans are social creatures. We are biologically predisposed to seek out relationships. Belonging and affiliation are a major part of our lives. And belongingness is actually connected to esteem. If you remember from our personality unit, we looked at Maslow's hierarchy. That is a big part of our need for belonging and our need for achievement. It's easier to have esteem once we have belonging, according to Abraham Maslow. And so that is going to be a step in the direction towards our need for achievement. There are a lot of different modalities for achieving affiliation or achieving belonging, including the internet. And there are some really interesting studies that look at the two sides of social media and social networking, where we can see how it both helps and harms our need for affiliation. At the end of the day, using it mindfully seems to be the most effective way to use social media as a way for reaching our affiliation needs. So let's really quick recap Maslow's hierarchy of needs because it is something that we've looked at before. Maslow believed that we need to reach each level of his triangle of the hierarchy before we can reach self-actualization and that that is the ultimate goal. Now different psychologists refer to this final goal in different phrases. Some use self-actualization, some use fully functioning person, some use need for achievement. And that was based on David McClellan's theory of needs. He said that we are driven by a need for achievement, for accomplishing certain goals and achieving high standards, and that we as humans have a basic need to strive. We have a need to achieve in different areas. And so McClellan came up with a test to measure a person's need for achievement. And it was very similar to tests that we've seen before, those projective tests from our personality unit, like the Rorschach inkblot test was an ambiguous test that meant to project or show us something about how we are really feeling or thinking. The thematic apperception test was the one where you looked at pictures and you did the same thing. You described what you saw in the scene, you told a story about it, and it was supposed to say something about you and the way that you are thinking and feeling. McClelland used a very similar setup, although the images and pictures he used weren't from the thematic apperception test. They were pictures of people involved in specific tasks, such as two men working on a machine. You had 20 seconds to look at each picture, and then you were asked to write a story about each picture. And if your story was about a person who was working hard and meeting their goals and were very successful, then that represents your own high need for achievement. But if the description or story was about fears and concerns and failures, then that might represent your own low need for achievement. And when it comes to need for achievement, the other thing that plays a role are what tasks do we feel a need to achieve? What are your life's greatest interests? What subjects in school do you particularly enjoy? When do you feel at your best, at your most talented? What activities could you do for hours on end? Think about that for yourself. If you can think of activities that fall into those categories that you have a high need for achievement in, they might be activities that are referred to as flow. Psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi found in his research that our quality of life increases when we are purposefully engaged. He found that individuals who experience this concept known as flow on a regular basis, where they lose sense of time and become fully enveloped in what they're doing, have a higher quality of life than those that don't have the opportunity to engage in flow on a regular basis. So if you have your own flow activities, try to engage with them as often as you can. Some other factors that play a role in our need for achievement also include grit. And grit, according to Angela Lee Duckworth, is what sets successful people apart from their equally talented peers. Those that are dedicated to their goals and passionate and work hard towards their long-term goals regardless of their talent level, are more likely to be successful than those who don't have grit. 
So your willingness to persevere, even when you're not the best at something, is what actually predicts successful outcomes more than IQ or test scores. So these are some different factors that play a role in what we work towards and why we want to be successful in different areas. Again, think about it for yourself, what you are passionate about, what you are interested in, and what you really enjoy doing. If you can find those activities and stick with them, not only will you be successful, but you might find a lot of enjoyment in it as well. We'll go ahead and stop there, and next up, we'll take a look at emotions. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember, be kind to your mind.